Loveline, coast to coast. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist, everyone. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Fresh office triumphant Oprah appearance. Oh, of course, you caught that. Yeah, no, I, I'm no. Sure, no, I'm sure you taped it. Are you sat in front of the TV <laughs> waiting? Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Tape. Yeah. Uh, Here's the way. The only way I can tape a TV show is if I'm physically standing there holding the record button yeah. as the show is yeah. playing. Yeah, the play and record button simultaneously. I, I know people think that's lame, and I must be kidding around, but I, I, I will be dead deadly honest with you here. When I want to tape, like if I'm doing, if I'm uh, going to be on politically incorrect or something. You actually or, tape yourself? I try. Really? Well, I want to see it. I'm shocked. You didn't use it. How dare you? I guess I TiVo it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If I'm going to be on a politically incorrect or something like the Leno or something, especially right. Kilborn or whatever, here's the way I do it. I leave the house at 930 to come here. Well. I take a, a six-hour cassette. I put it on the channel, and I hit play. Right. Then when I come home, there's uh, five hours of nothing. Yep. And then... There's me sometimes at the end if the tape hasn't run out. That is as close as I can get. I've had the TiVo unit for a year now. It does not work. Oh. I cannot get the thing working. No, that's the and uh, it's been uh, hooked up now for about three months, and I haven't been able to figure it out. So good times. Hmm. So uh, any, any response on the Oprah appearance? No. No. From home. I don't know. Everybody, everybody saw it seemed to like it. So. I think it's on out here at like 1230. 3 o'clock. No, but at oh, night, tonight. it yeah, repeats. Yeah, yeah, that's right, it does. So I am annoyed when I come home from work and I see that big puss on there. And tonight, I will not be uh, so annoyed because uh, Dr. Drew's big puss will be on there. And then you'll change the channel. Not quite as quickly, but you'll just move right along. Well, it is really funny when you do do things because uh, my initial <laughs> thing is, is, oh, hey, it's Drew. <laughs> and then I watch for about a minute and a half and I go, oh, hey, it's Drew. <laughs> and then I change the channel. Like, I get excited to see you, and then I realize, wait a minute. I, nobody sees you as, as, as much as me, That's so right. I, I should go ahead and change it That's now. right. So uh, I will, uh, I think it's on at like 12.30 or 1 o'clock. I, I will try to uh, watch that tonight. I spent the entire day in, uh, in Santa Barbara at uh, Ivan Reitman's oh, yeah, palatial yeah. estate. What's the estate like? Uh, we'll put it this way. I hope he's not listening. I don't know if he gets uh, angry at this kind of stuff. But uh -huh. Oprah, coincidentally, bought a place uh, ar down the street or around the corner. Yeah. Many acres. Yeah. This is, uh, for anyone who's not familiar with this area, it's, it's about 80, 90 miles out of L.A. So where a lot of the uh, celebrities and producers and types uh, have their second homes, sometimes first homes, up in the hills, yeah. uh, above the Pacific Ocean, basically. Um Oprah's place uh, cost her uh, fifty one million. <laughs> fifty one, and uh, one of her many homes. This place is better. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So, a lot uh, better. <laughs> I, I don't know because my mind shuts off <laughs> at about four hundred and fifty grand. I, I can't conceive of houses being you know more than eh, oh seven hundred thousand dollars. Let me put it this way. Let, let me ask this. Is it is it worth the extra effort? You know what I mean to own a house that's that incredible. Um, you, you understand what I'm asking? Yeah. Is it is it really is it worth it? Is it okay just to stop at four hundred thousand? Well, you got to ask yourself: Do you need an amphitheater on your property? Do, do you know what I'm saying? Is that what he has? Yeah. Do you want to open a door and look out and not see anything but what what is yours? king of all your sur survey yeah, and that, then the ocean but even that that's not where all the money is is it is it the land well uh, in that in that area yeah. you're talking about uh 30 40 acres <sighs> think is, about is, what an acre goes for up on that hillside hey i'm just down here right think what an acre goes yeah. for in pasadena and, right. is, and is the house spectacular to go with it spectacular yeah spectacular yeah, but is it worth that i mean is it worth whatever it takes to do that you know what i'm saying I, I don't know, but if you're making X amount, you, you know what I mean? If some movie you made 20 yeah. years ago goes to DVD, you open your mailbox and there's 10 million in it, right. then what do you mean? What's it worth? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's worth what? Doesn't matter. That, that, that could be the equivalent of a 
$20,000 home to you, right. for all you know. Right. I'm sure it's not that bad, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's all relative, but holy Christ, talk about it. It's, I mean, there's there's nice houses, there's mansions, and then there's this. Oh, really? Th- there's this. <laughs> Using a golf cart to get around the grounds. <laughs> oh, my God. People work, you know, po- and not ponds, lakes. I mean, it's just crazy. Crazy. All right. Ready to go here, Drew? I got back to my house. I took a dump on the living room floor. I say, you make me sick, house. <laughs> you call yourself a house? This is squalor I'm living in. Oh, my God. Oh, really, Jimmy and I were driving back from uh, Santa Barbara. I looked at him and I said, how miserable are we going to be when we get to our crappy houses? That's, well, that's, and we live in nice houses. That's what's unhealthy about stuff like that. You shouldn't be exposed it's to it. It's not even a house. You shouldn't be exposed to it. It's, I live in a, in a gardening shed now. And you people are listening? You live in a, a, a box that uh, matches are kept in. Oh, <laughs> boy. Really, I was miserable when I got home. I was watering my lawn. I was crying. I was watering it with tears. And pee. And urine. Yes, that's right. Robert? Yeah. You're 24. Yeah. What's up? Um, well, ever since my wife and I have gotten married, she wants to have a lot more sex than I do. Hmm. How much is that? Um, pretty much if I'm ready, she would be ready. Every day? Uh, every hour. Every hour. Well, what are you good for a week? Not much. Well, uh, are you give me a number. I don't know. If we're lucky once a week. Are you just not into this woman? I'm sorry, what was that? Are you not into your wife? I find her very attractive. I just, I don't know. Um, to me, that to me, by the way, that would be hell. You know what I mean? To I, think, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with somebody, I'm just sort of, eh. Whatever. Yeah, but if, Drew, you'd bang a knot hole if you had a couple of Zimas. <laughs> I mean, you are a very, very passionate, passionate, passionate man. But here's what I'm thinking: maybe Robert is creeped out a little. Maybe she's yeah, pushing. Just the way women get with men when they start pushing. Maybe he's getting the vibe that there's something up and it's turning him off. But how weird that it would start just after the marriage. How, did you know each other only for a couple of weeks before you got married? Uh, but. Two months, maybe. Oh, there you go. Yeah. They didn't know. How weird to get married so quickly? Does she, does she have a history? A history of what? Well, Sex, I sexual mean, abuse. Any, any abuse or any isms, anything Kinda. that ends with ism. What What is the history? Um, she was raped at a young age. Two. Who did it? Um, it was someone. I think it was a friend of hers. All right, but it's how a, old was she? She was 12. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some happened before that, too. Hey, how, sure. old, how old was the guy? I, I, I really don't know. It's your wife. Um, I, it was a friend of hers. That's all she really said. So I'm assuming close to the same age. Yeah, mm-hmm. We're assuming not. Friend of the family, maybe. Yeah. And yeah, how, how's, how's, how's her dad? He's, he's cool. He's, I don't know, since I've known him, he's been a little out, out of it. But that's just because he had an accident just after we got married. He had uh, cramped in his pants or had an accident? Uh, well, he fell off a roof. Oh, right? okay. Roofer. Bad yeah. times. All right. And uh, he's not an alcoholic or he didn't beat on her or anything? No. They they come from a very strict re- religious background. Mm-hmm. Mormon? No. Yeah. Seventh day. Oh. That, that's Mormon. That's Mormon. Seventh yeah. day uh, Adventist. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, Robert? Yeah. There's something going on with her. And here's what I think I think there's something going on with her. And I think you're picking up that vibe. And, and freaking out a little bit or shutting down a little bit. And I don't, I, I mean, it's easy to define in that she's coming on too strong and you're recoiling, but it's more of a vibe. You know there's something going on beneath the skin with her, right? Yeah. And and I think you need to address that. I mean, forget about the sex. Why why don't you just talk about getting some counseling, getting her some therapy, that kind of stuff? Yeah, we, we, we've been trying to look into that. Yeah. How's that going? Well, I mean, we just recently got medical, so... Hey, you got insurance. All right. All right look That's that. your route. Yeah. There's, Me- there's got to be something up with him, too, because she picked him. Got to be. You know what I was thinking about? I, I always argue... It, it's it's kind of weird and ironic, but we always say... I always say to women, look, you're not horny. Your husband's being a good guy. You're shut down. You're on some medication. You're having some post uh, part of depression or something. Just hold still. <clears throat> Let the guy mount up a couple times a week. He works hard. You know, give him a break. But with men, you actually kind of have to work a little bit. 
Yeah. I know this sounds like a horrible statement, but I mean, you got to get the erection and you got to move your ass up and down. Yeah. And if you're not motivated, it, it's going to be hard to even pull that off. Even more than I think what you're, what you're t- commenting on is that if a guy's not in the game, a, a woman's going to know it. And you're going right. to be disturbed by it. Yeah. Well, well, while a guy is going to be like, eh, whatever. Uh, listen, she could have a, a massive coronary halfway into it and just be lying there. Most guys wouldn't know or stop. Thank you. John? Yep. You're 16? Yeah, I called uh, last Thursday, and uh, you gave me this advice about my girlfriend. She said, I love you. Oh, and I told you just to tell her you love her. Yeah. Yeah. Did you? Uh, no. Thanks, idiot. <laughs> Why not? Well, um, she listened to the radio show, and then we <laughs> talked about it. Oh. That, that you know me doesn't ever say it. She... Her and I both have a big problem with it, and we never really say it to our parents even or yeah. anyone that close to us. Yeah, well, how long had have you been going out? Uh, three months. Three months. And she said, I love you at, at what? Uh, last Tuesday. So, I love you. So she like two and a half? What's that? Two and a half months or something? Uh, no. uh, close to three. Close to three. It's been over three, so it was like... I, I see. So at the three-month mark, she says, I love you. Well, she she's been out with a... Like, uh, she had a boyfriend for a year, and she never said to him. Where are we going, John? What's, John, the, what's the point here? Let, well, let me just recap here. It turned out really well, just talking to her about it. Oh, and, good. Oh, good. Thanks for... Did, you know, oh, you're welcome. But did, didn't she want you to say you love her after the talk? Uh, no. No, no, but here's what the talk was about. Still about didn't give it up. Yeah, huh? but it's how difficult it is for him to say that, because it's not said in his family. And she understood that, which is a very mature thing. You know? All right, I'm saying yeah. just start throwing it away. It doesn't have to mean he that. He doesn't much. know how. He can't. Well, uh, she, well, we both listened to that, and she she wasn't for that. She'd rather have him mean it. Mean it. Yeah, yeah exactly. It'll be honest as best he can. She'll be over that. In, yeah, and uh, that's what I was really going for when I when I first called. And uh, all right, so do you do you, you don't love her right now? Mm, he doesn't know. <laughs> no, but you know, it does kind of corner guys who won't say "I love you" yeah. if you phrase it this way. So you don't love her. Well, that's what they do, right? So you don't love me. Yeah. You talking I to me, Drew? I love you, yeah. You know I love you, man. Oh, dude. <laughs> All right, guy. So, John? Yeah? Do you not love her? I... <laughs> he doesn't I, know. I feel like I have to rescue this Oh, no, shut up. Would you, Drew? I'm trying to do some halfway decent radio no, for a change. I, I love yeah, you, too, man. <laughs> I do love her. You do love her? Yeah, but... But? You know, it's... There's different stages to love, you know. Yeah, like well, casual, it, and then there's deep. You he know. hasn't capitulated. Uh, give her, exactly. give her, tell you love her casually. <laughs> I, I did that. I, did I that love you light Friday. Yeah. After. Well, okay. Good. All right, John. You'll be fine. All right. Yeah. I was just saying thanks for the direction, and uh, it turned out really well. Good. Anytime. John, great. This yeah. is what keeps me coming back. Yeah. Callers like John. Yeah. And uh, my big fat paycheck. <laughs> That he used to buy all my exotic cars. Uh, Corey? Yes, sir. You're 21. I am. What's up? Well, um, I have this problem when I masturbate. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Instead of lotion, I just use Icy Hot. No, you don't. I do. No, you don't. Why would you? Well, uh, I lost a bet to a friend, and uh, uh, that was what happened. And no. I, I've no. been doing it since. No. no. There's no way to enforce that bet. How does he enforce that? Does he watch you do it? That time. He did? Yeah. All right. Well, who am I to pass judgment? <laughs> and I was just wondering if there's right. any long-term effects with that. Whacking off with Icy Hot? Yeah. Well, if you ever sprain your penis, you'll be in great shape. <laughs> your, your rehab time will be cut uh, almost in half. Uh, what's it feel like? Tingly? Uh, at, at first, it's a little hot, but, you know. Then the ice kicks in? The ice kicks in. It feels real good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I, I, it's not going to hurt you, is if it? If you're not seeing any irritation, I, I don't know of no specific problem with it. Do you ever get any on your balls? Uh, once. Is it? Does that hurt? No, not not too bad. Okay. <laughs> Think about it. All right, why don't you step up to uh, Ben Gay or something? Uh, no. You know, it's got a little more heat on it. I see how it's cheaper. All right. How much of that are you going through a week? Um, about half a tube. All right. Good times. 21-year-old guys. Let me try this. Ugh. Why not? I mean, if it offers some extra sensation. Oh, my God. 
Well, you're jacking off anyway, so who, you know. Who cares? Who, who are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> you might as well, who you trying to impress? well grab a handful of pate <laughs> and, and sniff something. Uh, you know what I mean? If you're going to go, you might as well do it. I'm a dry guy, but I'm thinking about trying out that Icy Hot. Uh -huh. William? Yes. You're 15? Yeah. What's up? Well, I wanted to know what the side effects of LSD, and um, I've been taking some meds. I'm taking, like, three different meds. What are you taking? I'm taking Dexedrine, uh, Evmipramine, or I'm so I used to take Evmipramine, Clonidine, and Wellbutrin. Wow. Okay. Because I had severe depression, and... All right, well, the uh, Wellbutrin, and the, the, the other one's an amphetamine. The first one you said. Uh-huh. Dexedrine? What's yeah. that for? ADD. ADD? ADD. Weird. ADD. ADD. speed for that. Yeah, well. Crazy. I need anger management. Yeah. I've got no problems. No kidding. But wh why are you, you going to compound it by getting into drugs? I don't know. It's just not a great idea for you. I mean, you're already on shaky ground emotionally. Yeah. yeah th this is going to make things worse. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, theoretically, you can have really quite dangerous reactions. Something called a serotonin excess syndrome that some can occasionally fire up with combining these medicines together. There's nothing specific about the ones you're using that would necessarily create that syndrome, but it always worries me when you're on medicines that could potentially do that. Yeah, because sometimes I'll get these weird shakes for no reason. Yeah. Almost See, like William, that. let me explain something. You need all of your brain just to maintain your life. As opposed to a genius like myself who can basically not use any of my brain oh, yes, and still function still function quite nicely, thank you. Oh, yeah. I don't even use it. I didn't even bring my brain tonight, Drew. It's out in my car. I get it during the nice. break. But, uh, William, you already have a history. You can't monkey with this stuff. Yeah. You're going to have to work hard and, you know, take your meds and do your therapy and do all that stuff just to have a decent life. Yeah. So you, you can't screw with this. So don't do that. It's really a mistake. I, I, I'm telling you, as cool as it may sound now or as many of your friends are doing it, it it's just a mess. Well, see, that's the thing. All my friends tell me not to. Oh, all right. Mm -hmm. But I still do. Well, well yeah. you got to quit hanging around with them. They're, are bad. You, <laughs> They're bad element. Are you, you don't care? I, I see that's the problem. I do care, but it just it kind of helps me. It helps you do what? It just helps me feel a lot better. Well, if you're not feeling well, then you need to talk to the people that are prescribed the medication to get something that helps you feel better. Because if you need that kind of escape, there's something very, very wrong. You're saying acid makes you feel better? Yeah. Yeah, some people get a real really? escape high with that. Yeah. yeah. Hey, William? Yeah. You got to do something about this. Okay. But it, it's not it's not the drugs. That's it's, not the answer for you. It's not? No. No. No, I think um, Jesus Christ. I rarely give out uh, Jesus' name. He asked me to stop talking about him on the air. But I I think in William's case, he may uh, want to find him. Andrew? Yes. You're 23? Yes. What's hey, uh, Adam, I met your real parents last night. Whoa. Really? Your real parents aren't your real parents. Do so you think they are? See, the way Adam Carolla was actually <sighs> came into this earth was Gilbert Godfrey and Dennis Miller had sex, and out came Adam Carolla. <laughs> Did you meet those two last I night? I met them last night. It, the accent from Gilbert Godfrey, the nasally voice, the wit of Dennis Miller. Well, thank you. Hey, you know, Gilbert Godfrey's actually a very funny guy. People yes, uh, don't give as, him enough credit because... As well as you are. Well, thank you, but he, he spends, you know, the better part of his career doing voiceover Parents. work for toasters and smoke alarms <laughs> and things like that. But he's really a funny guy. But it always kills me that when people say you look just like Gilbert Godfrey because he's oh, an impish, he is an impish little five-foot-tall well, man who will was, not bathe. He was on the TV show, remember? Yes. And they sat you guys together. I was like, oh, no, no. Thank you. Yeah. Advice for all you virgins out there that Adam should have given a long time ago. You've kind of touched upon it, but if all you virgins out there think sex is such a big deal, it's not. Anybody will tell you that. If you want to get laid and you want to get this whole thing over with, go to a place Adam Carolla has been many times. It's called Tijuana. Went there myself this last weekend. You've never seen anything like it. Am I wrong? Uh, <sighs> hey, listen. You think you've been to How Tijuana? Barry Anderson yawn at my <laughs> You, comments. you, you should have been to Tijuana in 1981 with the donkey. Oh my! The place was a disaster area. Oh, it's a utopia now. It, it really, it's Disneyland compared to uh, what the, the debauchery. The, the pre, go the Tijuana pre aids There is a hooker every three feet. Of I course, you not and. Uh, 
every two feet, it's a guy hooker, by the way, with his mm -hmm. chunk tucked between uh, his I and found knees. out that the hard way. But All right, I so you, you bought it. You got a hooker in Tijuana? Oh, uh, several. How, ma how much did it cost? It's only 20 bucks, boys and girls. And what, what, did, there, what did you get? You what, what did you that? get? Did you get a BJ or did you get uh, sex? I got the, uh, the whole thing. You know, it brings me to my next point. My buddy, I'm kind of worried about Wait a minute. Let me ask you a couple of relevant yeah. questions. Let's go. Were you on Revolution Boulevard? Uh, I was in uh, Lockawila. I'm not sure. I wasn't too... Uh, I was kind of spun out on well, tequila most great. of the time. Great. All right. <gasps> <laughs> so what, uh, what, what about your buddy? Oh, listen to this. Okay, he has got severe problems. He is going up to every prostitute that is there asking if he can have sex with her without a condom, okay? Yeah. Before you freak out on that, uh, he picks up some chick on Santa Monica and La Brea the other night, which, you know, you're familiar with that area, has yeah. sex with her without a condom. And I looked at this, whatever it was, and it looked like a man. So yeah. uh, wow. I'm kind of worried about my buddy there. Doesn't well, really what to do. Will he listen to you? Uh, no. <laughs> he, he's an addict, I bet. Uh... Sexual addict. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sex addicts do that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, what what can we do if she's if he's not listening to him? I don't know the consequences would bring him in. Well, let me tell you as I uh, as I learned from uh, listening to a PSA on AIDS when I was driving home a week ago. And Drew, you're a doctor. You probably know the answer to this. Do you know the only known cure for <laughs> AIDS? You want to check your medical textbooks, uh, or do you think you know the only uh, known cure? For AIDS. Well, let me see. The word cure suggests you've already contracted it. So well, I couldn't possibly be suggesting that not getting it. No! Is, ah! Ha-ha! No. That's where you're wrong. No. The According to the PSA I was listening to, the only known cure for AIDS is not getting it. Now, let's see if that works with other diseases. Let's see. Cure for heart disease? Not getting it. Cancer. Yeah. How about a cure for uh, motorcycle crashes? Don't have it. Don't know crashing. <laughs> How about automobile and train crashes? Don't do it. Airplanes? Don't. Buses? Nope. That's right. There you go. That's what you learn from listening to Late Night Radio. The only known cure for AIDS is not getting AIDS. Thank oh. you very much. <laughs> All right. Did and that, that... best way to keep your virginity? Don't get screwed. No. There you go. Do they couple those with the uh, secondhand smoke ads? Yeah. Just for fun? The one where uh, 50,000 people die every year? Every five minutes? Right. Except for it's really about five people. I really like to get hold of those people. And then I hear the one on um, airplane uh, turbulence uh. safety, and that's when I just punch my head right out the sunroof of the car and start screaming like <laughs> a madman. Okay, we're going to take ourselves a break. And when we come back, we'll speak to Grace, 18, exposed to herpes three weeks ago. Is it too early to get a test for it? We'll find out after this. Hey, Shandala, Shandala, Shandala. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Shandala was the noise uh, Frank used to make a guy used to work with when I installed <laughs> closets with uh, born again Christians. You just start talking in tongues. Nineteen eighty nine. Well, he spoke in tongues, but it was not really. It was, it, he, just he, one word. It was like he spoke in tongue. <laughs> he was no rich little Mexican guy with a tattoo on his neck and a teardrop tat in his eye. Shandala, carrying around a Bible. Oh yes, those were the good old days. Vanessa? Uh huh. You're 18? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Drew, weren't we going to talk to the herpes guy? I uh, will talk to Did him after you. Did you promote that? <laughs> I've been promoting it all weekend. No, but I mean, you didn't. You didn't I back te sold. teased that. I teased. All right. Go ahead, Vanessa. What's answer. back selling? I have, I have no idea. Right. Oh, we just heard. Oh, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Adam, I love mm -hmm. you. You're incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Like last Saturday, I met this guy and I was at a party and we were drinking and everything. And then I ended up giving him oral sex. In, now. in where? <laughs> at a party. Like. All right. All right. You said something. You gave him oral sex in. Oh, no. I was just, I just was giving him head. And then um, now my tonsils are like double size. <laughs> Oh, when she says now, my it sounds like she says narrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. thought she said in a well, narrow. Well, because I can't talk because they're humongous. Okay, so you have an infection, all right? 
uh-huh. tonsil infection. We we hope it's not chlamydia or gonorrhea because it can be. Yeah. Uh, so how long ago was the BJ? This was on Saturday. On Saturday night. Right. Oh my God, it's probably just strep something. But why don't you see? They have the, like little white patches, like just the. F- I know you're you're getting tonsillitis. Oh. And you, what, you what do, did BJ have to do with that? Well, because we, we, I just thought that it was from giving him head. No, yeah. I, I know, I know. That's I, I'm asking Drew though. Uh, it, it could, you know, gonorrhea chlamydia can look like that. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Mm. No, no condom, obviously. No, well, no. No, listen, I don't well, blame I, you. I was drunk. Yeah, all right. So. Well, as long as you were loaded. <laughs> so then it makes it all okay. How How old was the guy? Um, he was twenty eight. Oh, you do need to tell the oh. doctor, okay? Twenty eight, going to a party, getting a BJ from a nice eighteen year old. <laughs> oh, he's scum. You, you do need, you know, and given her GC, you know, gonorrhea. But listen, you need to tell your doctor about this. It's important because okay. the kind of culture you got to do for both chlamydia and gonorrhea is, is very specialized. And it might change the antibiotics he or she would give you too. Oh, how, how does uh, how does she tell the doctor what, what she's just I, I, I no? or had oral sex the really? Saturday, and I'm worried that this is an STD. Really? Or just even just, you know what, just say, I'm worried this could be an STD. I had a okay. new a new partner. Just okay. leave it at that, and the doctor knows what you mean, okay? Okay. All right, All right baby. Okay. Hey, you do a lot of that? Um, well, why? Why do you want some? <laughs> well, not now. <laughs> Five minutes ago, I did. Well, like, I just broke up with my boyfriend. Well, I see. And, um, I don't know, I've just been, like, lonely, so... Why are you right. acting stupid like that? Right. You're lonely, so you give guys BJs? Well, yeah. What? Well, listen, know. she's like a kitten being... Being petted now. Yeah. Well, I didn't have a dad when I was growing up. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Thank well, you. Thank you for getting right to it for us. Now, now everyone's dad, except for you're blowing them. Mm-hmm. That's way to control them. But it's keep, a weird thing. It's leaving. like, look, if you're going to look at the guy's dad, don't give him the BJ. You wouldn't blow dad, would you? Give him a tie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give him a, a nice clip on. I'm confused. Yes. I'm a confused, young lady. Yes, yes. Very. You sound like a very nice young lady, and it would so bad you treat yourself better. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Hey. I know, like, I know everything that I should do, but it's just... Right. Doing it is the hard part. Yeah. Okay, but but uh, how long ago did you break up with your boyfriend? In, in April. Okay. Two now, months ago. How how many guys have you blown since then? About seven. Mm. Really? Mm. Sneezy, grumpy, doc, who else? <laughs> yeah, okay. the whole gang. And I slept with, like, four. <laughs> okay. Vanessa. You're, but okay, but but listen, Vanessa, as is, 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 is crazy as the last few months have been for you... You still have not crossed the oh, threshold yeah. into wild numbers or making movies or doing anything crazy. Not yet. <laughs> okay. Here's, here's my point. You can stop that now. I don't mean stop having sex. I mean, st- stop doing what stop, you're doing to yourself. Out, yeah. You can stop acting out. Okay, you want to do that? Hard, though. Okay, but listen, Vanessa, here, let me explain what's going to happen. And, and this goes to people who are getting into heroin or giving 28-year-olds BJs in, at parties in the back of the guy's Camaro while he's giving her STDs. Here's the thing. At this point, you can stop no harm, no foul. Two years from now, when you've blown 4,000 guys and you got uh, herpes and hepatitis and your new fiancé gives you that uh, penny for your thoughts... <sighs> Well, and he gives him that speech, you know. Um, I've been with, well, te- seven and a half. Seven, technically, well, technically seven, but I say seven and a half because one time I got to second base and she says, I've, I've blown the last uh, 4,000 guys I've been. You've already crossed. You understand? Yeah. Stop now. Okay. I'll try. All right. Or just, I'll call you no, 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 forget you it. Know, get some friends, get important people, keep them close to you. Talk a lot. Just stop yeah. Stop acting out. I don't care if you have sex, if, as long as it's not acting out, which is I what it is what when you go. Yeah. Hey, if you find a guy you like, you go on a couple dates, you want to have all kinds of crazy monkey sex with him, that's your business. <laughs> but you getting drunk at a party and blowing some guy who's uh, near 30 is not a good plan for you. You understand the difference? Yeah, I do. Because the guy with the date, you're probably going to see him again. Yeah. Okay. And he's probably somebody has some, some concern right. for you as a person. Listen, your dad left. Okay, right. big deal. Everyone's dad leaves who calls it's this hard. show. It's hard because I'm like, I, I can't find any guys that like want to actually like go out on. Well, a date. Look, but you're not you're not looking for those guys. Well, why should they go? They're getting a BJ in the parking lot of the restaurant. Well, like, well, because I'm like I'm kind of overweight, so. Okay, listen. Drew Drew wrote that down. By the way, he thought <laughs> no, he didn't. 
Vanessa, here's your big problem. Forget about finding the guys right now. You've had plenty of guys in the last few months. You've had three years worth of guys in the last three you months. No, you can get, you can track their attention. You, no problem. You can give anyone a BJ. You can give a, a cigar. Congratulations. A wooden Indian out in front of a cigar yeah. store. You could get to come. You understand? <laughs> now relax. It's okay. not all about guys and what they're going to do for you and how they're going to fix you and how they're going to make you whole. You got to fix that. You got to work on that. That's you. That's not them. Stop Jeez, looking I, you for know, them. I was thinking today, I was going to ask you if you're doing any work with your therapist. Are you still being no. us in them? Thank uh, you. Oh, this is nice. Oh, I thought you were sleeping. But obviously, you are doing a little bit of work. No. You started talking finally to your therapist, huh? No. You're talking about the masturbation? How dare you? Oh, I guess not. My therapist could be listening, Drew. <laughs> No, I don't talk about such things. I told you I can't... Such things. Such th <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> such things. In, See, such improprietors. In the, the company the of strangers? Oh. How dare you? Never mind. You talk about it to millions of people on the radio every night. Millions. Did you beat off? Listen, Drew, I've told you why I do not talk to my therapist about masturbating. Mm -hmm. because, because I cannot you're... talk about masturbating without masturbating. I, but that, yeah, and if he wants me to beat off right there in the office... Plus, it takes that full hour to discuss the Laker game. Drew, how, Laker's been playing and... how dare you? I've not been discussing anything of any relevance or importance That's with my the therapist. I've not even been going the last uh, few weeks because oh, really? I've been having to work all those days. Uh, Grace? Hi. Um... I had sex with someone five, like five weeks ago, and I heard from all his friends that he has herpes. Did you say five weeks ago? Yeah, like like a month and a half ago, or like two months ago, around then. It was then. unprotected sex. No, it was protected, but I heard you can get it even though you're wearing a condom. But you, I also I had oral sex with him too. No condom. With no condom. On yeah. The oral sex. Did you, Did you? You didn't see any breakout or anything like no, that. No, I didn't. Did you? They're, they're I, less likely to be contagious if there's no breakout. Oh, okay, and I also have a question about it. Like, I got tested, though, like three weeks ago. Yeah. For what? I, for everything. I just went in for, like, a, a general, and, like, I just got everything tested, like well, HIV and everything. They can't really test for the herpes, though. Not, not, not without an outbreak. we got to see something. Yeah. Oh. But it's all right. You don't have anything. Then then to yeah. see, right? Right. And then they can culture. A lot of women don't know that they have herpes, and they will do cultures. And, yeah, they and do well, the culture. Yeah, it was negative. Um, well, she, the thing, I think so, because she never called me back. You're she fine. If I don't hear from her. Well, maybe you're, maybe you're dying, and she didn't know how to get the words <laughs> well, but together. The, the place we got to worry about, actually, is your mouth. You've not had any outbreak around the mouth? No. All right, okay. relax. Just, Hold on. I told her about that. Um, but about HIV, though, like, mm. like HIV, you know how it could show up six months after, even though you got tested before? Yeah. yeah. Is, is, is herpes like that? Too? Not so much. Herpes, most will have something within two to four weeks. Oh, you're and fine. that's pretty buddy. much it. Hey. If you get herpes, you have no outbreak, you've never had an outbreak, but somehow you've contracted it, they can culture that? No, it's more that you've had an outbreak but didn't know it. I see. Whereas, but what woman's going to... I mean, I know uh, a woman's got a lot of inside parts. No, in the women commonly can get, be just on the cervix and they just get, like, they think they're having a bad period. Or that oh, it's, going, it's on the cervix. Yeah, or they think that they're Ooh. just having, you know, they, they just think they're kind of sick, they got a urine infection, they, they think oh, they have a yeast infection. It can, it can masquerade at all sorts of things. That herpes way up there? Yeah. Oh, bad times. Uh, Jay? Yeah. You're 25. Yeah. What's up? Um, yeah, I had a I had a, a question for Dr. Drew. Well, you know, for you too, Adam. But uh, uh, I've been smoking pot. Well, I recently quit. But I've been smoking pot, you know, since I was 12 or 13 years old. Uh, in the last, you know, 8 or 10 years, really heavy smoker. And uh, I quit in, in January, and I, I always had a really great memory. Uh, you know, people say that pot really affects your memory. I, I didn't really have any of that kind of problem. I, you know, people would tell me their phone number. I'd remember it right away. But when I quit smoking, uh, I lost my, my memory, basically. Uh, like the first couple of days, I, I forgot how to drive a car. I was like, you know. Well, you're detoxing, though. That'll take a few weeks. Uh-huh. And still, I haven't quite got my memory back like i forgot how to play the guitar you know i forgot i forgot all sorts of well then maybe you just thought you know how to play because you're baked <laughs> i thought that well, what's interesting is something called state dependent learning so maybe you learned those things when you were high well yeah, yeah i mean i definitely started smoking before i started yeah and I, so, I know like i'm a almost a professional caliber jazz drummer when i'm stoned uh -huh. that i know but i can't <laughs> play at all when i'm not but the man 
the memory issue is more about new learning. In other words, when somebody now tells you your phone the, a phone number, do you have any trouble remembering them? Yeah, I, I can't remember it as well, or I don't seem to retain it as well. All right. The other thing is you usually will get depressed for the six months after you stop smoking pot. Is that starting to happen to you? No, I, no not not really. I, I, you know, I kind of wish I could smoke, I, but uh, I can't. Uh, you know, Are you doing something else? Uh, no. Taking any other drugs or no, no, no. alcohol? Drew, haven't we heard oh, yeah, this? I, I, I drink, but I, I don't. Like, I used to drink a lot more, and I used to do a lot more drugs just in general. Um, and no, I, I don't, I don't drink. I mean, you know, I, I you haven't stepped beer, anything. Whatever, you haven't I, stepped anything else up to replace the pot. Uh, uh-uh. haven't we heard this uh, before? Yeah, but it's usually people who are getting memory problems when they stop. That's why they stop. They're getting frustrated with the fact they can't remember stuff. All right. So, what's this problem? It's good. It, the, here's the good news about pot: is this, in my experience, the vast majority of these symptoms get better, but it will take at least six months. Where is the part of the country where uh, people learn to say? Uh-huh. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. That's right, yeah. yeah Where is that? Uh, seventh grade. Oh, is which it? Which is when he started smoking pot. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> we, we do hear that about every sixth caller. We hear the, uh-uh. So my kids say that. Oh, so, so it's what you do when you're a kid. Yeah. And if you never really got out of that. When you start smoking pot, then you don't develop. Interesting. Isn't that wild? All right. That's like our girls with the, the little girl voices. Right. So the uh, male equivalent to the little girl voices. Uh-uh. I mean, not yeah. not progressing. Yeah. I'll tell you, I, I saw some, like, a e special on Marilyn Monroe oh. just a uh, few nights back, and I was listening to her with my new uh, Love Line ears. Yeah. <laughs> and I was, you know, watching her sing uh, Happy Birthday to oh, Mr. Yeah. President. Oh, yeah. And just multi-interviews and movie parts, yeah. and I realized, oh, my God, yeah. somebody did something awful to that poor yeah. woman yeah. And uh, for a while. Yeah. I mean, you listen, go back, watch a watch a movie, or better yet, because you could you know you could chalk that up to acting, but watch a, just an interview or something with Marilyn Monroe. Listen to her voice, and then listen to the type of people we're talking about on this show, and you'll realize, wow, but that's where that's where we got off on the wrong foot in terms of understanding these people. It became look how sexy she is, right? Instead of just a, an abuse victim. Yeah. All right, should we go kill ourselves? No, let's have some more nuts. Okay. Yeah. Remember, guys, all good-looking women have been raped. <laughs> we'll be back. Hi, this is Chris from The Living End, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Don't touch that dial. All right. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. Hey, that's Drew, just like the guy said. Phone number, 1-800-LOVE-191. Who's on here tomorrow? The Colt will be in here tomorrow. That is a good band, and I think they're back. So uh, we'll talk to those guys. There you go. That's the Colt. Where's that real signature Colt sound? There it is. <laughs> now you know it's the Colt. All right, we'll talk to them uh, tomorrow. Weren't they in here a few years ago? I thought it was a few months ago. Like eight months ago, ten months ago? A year ago? I don't know. Ask Ann when the Colt was in. Anderson, you remember about a year ago? Yeah. Jamie? Yeah. You're 39. What's up? Um, uh, I knew I, I was physically abused as a child and uh, beaten and battered left and right. But it wasn't until I had a small procedure done at the gynecologist that I found out that sh- I was sexually mutilated. What do you mean you found out? Uh, Where well, were you when that happened? Uh, I had a cyst that needed to be lanced. No, no. Why didn't you know you had been? Uh as far as I can, I have no memory of it whatsoever. I always felt that my mother never crossed that line. But, um... My mother? Yeah, my mother. Uh, she was psychotic, drugs, you know, the whole work, you know. Was she, so she was the one perpetrating the abuse? Yes. Oh. Physical yeah. abuse? Physical, mental, and I always thought that there was this little line she never crossed uh, that was sexual. Mm. So that you never remembered any kind of sexual abuse from her. None. How about none any of her? Whatsoever. How about any, how about her drug addict friends? Uh, well, no. She she stuck to prescription drugs, and she was very paranoid. So she isolated herself. She drove my father away, my brother away, mm. got everybody out of the house. So it was right. just her and me. And oh all I can think God. of is that she did this uh, mutilation when I was a baby. Right, well, what is they noticed? Um. 
according to the gynecologist, there were straight line scars all over uh, my vaginal injury area, huh. and there there was a large purplish area that looked like a permanent bruise, and mm. and I could identify that because I have been kicked down there by my mother. Uh. But, um, you know, the doctor started asking me questions about, uh, did you have any surgeries that you know of? How, how, how come nobody picked this up before? Because well, they, yeah. when I started seeing gynecologists, I never had to shave. But because they were dealing with a cyst, I had to shave the area for them to drain the cyst. A Bartholin cyst? Huh? Something like a Bartholin cyst? Or? Uh, actually, it turned out to be not as crucial. Uh, I do my own draining as you know, Drew, so <laughs> I, I can't Lancing identify what with you this. do. Thank you. Yeah. Lance and drain. Uh, okay, so, so, so anyway, the, the area had to be shaved, so that's right. the first time somebody saw the scar. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, Alright, so what's the question? Yeah, good times. Yeah, mom's nuts. Okay. Is mom dead? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Uh, I was quite happy to plant her, as a matter oh, of fact. That's to great. To plant her. I would have loved to have been there and watch you deliver that eulogy. Uh, no, I, I actually had nothing to say. Neither did my brother. It turned out he was abused as a child, too. Shocking. And, uh, now how have your relationships been? Well, I haven't had that many relationships, but I did, uh, until I married my husband, I did fixate on older men. Yeah. yeah. Right. Seeing that my father was out of the picture. Have you, have you, do you have kids of your own? No. No. Good um, times. I don't think I'm able to have children. I miscarry before the first trimester. So. Oh, interesting. Do you so, think that could be a product of the abuse? Uh, uh, do you have um, warts or do you need any cervical procedures or anything? Uh, well, th there were a lot I, uh, for a very, very young child, I had a lot of vaginal infections right, okay. related to unclean... All right. Uh, if I remember right, the first the, the first trimester is more the genetic disorders of the of the developing right. fetus, well, while the second, third is uh, the cervical competence. Jamie, as you know, I'm a big fan of denial. Uh, <laughs> your mom's a horrible person that abused <laughs> you horribly. Uh, this may have been something that she caused, or maybe it wasn't. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if there's some sort of a vaginal pathologist who could figure this out. Is that your question? Uh, well, basically, the the way the doctor described it, it looked like somebody took a razor blade to my private area. Very nice. Is that is that it? That, what's your question about that, though? Uh, well, I was something of a nymphomaniac. You as were. soon as I became sexually aware, I um, I didn't have that many partners, but. I was sex obsessed. But right. that, that could be just the abuse of, you know. But what's the question still? Well, since this has happened, my sexual desire has gone to nothing. Since what has happened? They found the scars? I'm sorry? Since they found the scarring? Since they found the scarring. Um, mm. Uh, mm. It, it was so severe that the doctor even wanted to find out if my husband had done this because he was ready to report him for for abuse. All right. And you, you don't have any kind of multiple personality or anything no, like that? No, no. I'm... Okay. I'm well, really l l l listen. I'm sure when you got this report, it drudged up a lot of feelings. Yeah. yeah. And for women, that's yeah. what sex is about, feelings. And it shuts you down for a while. You'll be back on that horse. Also, <laughs> perfectly normal, perfectly healthy. Of course. Also, uh... For women who've been through what she's been through, we were just talking about it last night, you get into that uh, manic, hyper-sex time, and then you have those dormant periods. Right, right. She may be entering that. Yeah, I'm also interested in how you, how you talk about women's connection with their feelings and sex. You say it with outrage. Outlandish. How dare you? How dare they? Right. Feels, sex is about feelings, right? Uh, Can you imagine that? It could, it, I, it could be connected. It's connected to the no, news, I'm right. sure. You're right. Not the scarring, because you're having plenty good sex before you knew about it. I even wonder if she did that to herself, Ooh. because uh, sometimes people that are badly abused will cut on themselves, and that's a place they cut. Kimberly? Yes? Well, don't freak around. You're 22. What's up? Yeah, um, good evening. Thank you for taking my call. Um, Thank you for calling the show. <laughs> um, my problem is that um, I had a second trimester abortion about uh, four years ago. Why? Um, I just I just couldn't have it. I didn't want to have it. Um, Wait, hold on a second, Drew. Uh, uh, we got to go to break. But uh, what is this? It, it's uh, is the next call. Someone got an M eighty put in their vagina. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm going nuts here. It's all yeah. these women with these crazy okay. vaginal problems. Well, take some guy who got his door caught in a blender or something, for Christ's sake. 
Damien, en enough with the v vaginal mutilation. It's bringing me down. Tara, easy, easy with all the vag stuff. Just, Who I'm, knows what goes on in, in the, the old vagina, vagina, the old vagina, the old vagina. vagina. I'm about ready to sprout a vagina, and it's not gonna not gonna be in good shape either. We'll take a little break. We'll ramp up with Kimberly, and then we'll get to some good penis questions <laughs> after this. Howdy, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Drew. The Colt is going to be in here tomorrow night for all you Colt fans. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Let's uh, hop back. and You don't want to finish up that last one? We didn't do that one at all. I got into her vagina. Oh, yeah, but you got off it into Penisville. But I was knee deep in her vagina. All right, let's do it. That was four, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Kimberly? Yes. Hi. Okay, this is my problem. My right. problem is that uh, I had the second trimester abortion throughout the pregnancy. I was using speed heavily. Oof. I mean, every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It was just crazy. And uh, ever since, ever since about two months after I had it, I've been having these crazy symptoms i've got a lot of fatigue bad digestion recurrent yeast infections memory loss headaches well, well uh, that's speed that's that's what speed does how long have you been off speed i've been off for four years ever since i had the abortion well the unfortunately it's be the memory problems the mood disturbances the feeling not right can be permanent from speed um but i also have body odor and skin rashes that doctors say is fungus i've got low blood pressure iron deficiency and all these kinds of things and it's really driving me crazy i sent a blood sample to the uk uh to be tested for candida albicans overgrowth kimberly I you're a severe drug addict you damage parts of your body from that it's not going to be the same you're going to have weird symptoms that, that's what happens when you've been doing a lot of drugs why would you send a blood sample to the uk because uh, I kind of, you know, I kind of suspected uh, candida albicans overgrowth. Yeah, and, uh, Kimberly, Kimberly, you, you, yeah, you don't need any of that. You, you, you have plenty of reason to, to have problems, just just uh, with the speed. And what are you doing for your addiction? What are you, are you using anything else now? No, I'm completely off of everything. Cold turkey, and I never missed it. I are you on? Any, are you on any medication? No, I'm not. Huh. What? What? You're Drew, not... I, what's with the UK and the Canada? Right. <laughs> Shouldn't you send <laughs> your stuff internet. to Canada? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. uh, the thing is that you know nobody. Well, nobody wanted to do that blood test for me here. They were like, "No, you're de you have depression. All these are." Yeah, know. that's right. This is all typical of people that have done a lot of speed and then come off it. It it it, it damages the brain. I. I, I would say if you if you want to check out the National Institute of Drug Abuse, they have a bunch of an area in there that shows what happens to brain after periods of speed exposure, particularly heavy speed exposure, hey, this, and depression, this, all, all sorts of funny feelings or, or normal memory disturbances. This yeah, could have nothing to do with the abortion. This has nothing to do with the abortion. That's what about the fact that she was doing a lot of speed when she was pregnant? Um, Does that I, change I anything? Not to my knowledge. What about getting an abortion when you're doing a lot of speed? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Yeah, good questions, but I don't think it makes a difference. Well, here's the thing that uh, Drew has alerted me to. We always hear about these success stories of uh, all these people that are strung out on heroin or speed or whatever the hell it was. They were on death's door. And, that you know, two years later, they've been sober. They've yeah. been working out. They got it back together. And that does happen. But sometimes people don't snap back. Oh, I mean, you got to understand. There, hey, there are three drugs in which you will not snap back. Ecstasy, speed, and LSD. Really? I didn't know speed was in there. You got to do a lot of it, though. You got to do a lot of speed. And you saying and I should do a lot of speed? You need to. You personally, you got to do a lot. Do a lot. Yeah, of speed. you got to do a lot. That's what I heard. And Kimberly, when you don't replace the drugs of addiction with a process like recovery, the mood disturbances and the anxiety are usually profound. So I suggest you get involved in a program of recovery. All right, let's talk to Casey, who's fourteen. Casey. Hey, Adam. Uh, I heard the guy with the icy hot earlier. Mm -hmm. That guy was so full of crap. Yeah. You, you you don't do that on purpose if you don't do it more than once. Dude, that hurts so bad. It does. It happened the to icy you? hot on the penis. Huh? That that guy was so full of crap. What what happened to you? Well, I, I was playing. I was at a baseball game and my arm hurt, and I got it. I used it with my left hand to get it on my right arm, and I went to the bathroom. And, oh, it burned for like half an hour. Was it icy hot? Yeah, it was icy hot. Yeah. Well, I. Don't know, I I, I suspect that the guy had a bogus call, but I've never really used that icy hot. And because the word icy was in it, I thought, well, 
Adam, I don't know, but but Adam, um, I like to tell you I've gone beyond the uh, writing on my shoes. Your name, Ace Rockola, is actually in my screen name online. You're gay. Wow, that is great news. Yeah. Did you used to go to drdrew.com? I went there once and I didn't like it. There's, <laughs> there's a guy with that screen name. He used to go to the Drew. What are you, an asshole? <laughs> See, Drew, what happens when you ask questions? Well, I'm curious. What didn't you like? Dude, I don't know. It's just the chatting. Is Lame, crazy. right? Yeah. Lame, oh. Exactly. Lame with a capital L. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Yep. Hey, you keep up God's work, all right? All right. All right. All right. It's, it's a kindred spirit there. Ace Rock Cole is a screen name. Uh, yeah. There were, there's a lot of those. Because I, yeah. I used to run into some of those guys. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's funny is, uh, I don't know, it just popped in my head, but um, remember about, and it was about four years ago, five years ago, somebody had bought the name uh, like AdamCarolla.com. Yeah. Because uh, that was back during the days when they would scam you. Yeah. They'd spend 65 bucks, register the thing, then they'd have it. And then theoretically, I would buy it back mm -hmm. off of them one day when I was ready to launch my website or yeah. sell my merchandise. Yeah. I still can't turn on the goddamn computer. Mm -hmm. I I'll tell you, that was the worst money that was the worst money management decision anyone has ever made buying my name for something that has something to do with a computer i still have no idea what the internet is i have no <laughs> idea how to work a computer i can't type my name that's good i've never been on the internet that's I've good because even if you could get on you couldn't read it that was there no i could not read that that's good and let me tell you something if anybody and this is really funny sometimes uh people will say yeah some uh one time someone reported back to me. They, anyone who knows me would laugh their ass off. Some guy was uh, doing the uh, X, was on like the X show website, which is uh, amazingly canceled. No. Hey. Well, you ripped them off. Of course now they're going to. Sure. Yeah. Sure. That's right. I remember when the man show came out, everyone said, what about the X show? Everyone said, what about the happy hour? What about all these other shows? And what was my answer, Drew? Uh, you'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Oh. And the man show is going for its fourth episode coming up next. So fourth season coming up next year. But, wild coincidence. But uh, somebody said they, uh, some guy named Adam Carolla got on the uh, website, the X Show website, and they were sure it was me. Yeah, no way. It, it, no way. No way. No way. I mean, no way. <laughs> this guy was typing in all sorts of crap. Typing. <laughs> <laughs> typing sounded oh. just like Adam Carolla. <laughs> we're sure it was him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Drew, you knowing me. You have an ironclad alibi in me. No way. Right. As no a way. doctor. No way. No way. Thank you. Lori? Yeah. You're 20. What's up? Um. Well, I was raped five years ago back when I was a freshman in high school. Good times. Uh, no, not really. Oh, okay. But, um, and just, I used to have nightmares about it, but just here since I've hit like the fifth year, it, they've gotten really bad, and I just don't know how to get rid of them. How did you deal with this when it happened? Um, well, when it happened, I, my mother put me in counseling, and I was put on Prozac for a while, and pretty much isolated from all my friends. And You isolated yourself? No, my mother isolated me. Why? Because, well, I lived in a real small town in Arkansas, and, I mean, it happened on a Saturday night. Everybody found out by, about it by Sunday morning. And it just, it did a lot of damage to me and my mother, I think she really couldn't handle it. You uh, were, you were 15? Uh-huh. Why does you being raped do damage to you in terms of your well, ability to feel sh ashamed it, of yourself? You, I, you know, small town and people no, and... Wait I, a minute. Why? You, you were a victim of a violent crime. Why should the town come down on you? Yeah, well, I mean, they did. I mean, pretty much everybody saw it was my fault and I was the one that wanted it and... But, I mean, the guy you got You've got to be kidding me. No, I, I, the guy... No, no, listen, that's her interpretation of it. No, listen. Go ahead. Okay, um, I mean, the guy bought his way out of it and everything. I mean, my town, there's only like 1,500 people in it. I mean, his cousin was the sheriff and whatnot, so he bought pretty much bought his way out of it, and so I never really had closure from it. How old was the guy? 20. And what happened? Well, um... I was spending the night at a friend's house, and we thought, hey, we're going to be cool and sneak out to this, to these older guys' party or whatever, and, I mean, I, I liked him, and I, you know, I thought I could trust him or whatever, and they, we ended up drinking. I drank, I don't even know how much Everclear, and got really drunk, and, I mean, I can remember everything that happened that night. I mean, just saying no and everything else, and... How old were you again? Fifteen. 
Mm. So he, did he? Did he? He held you down and mm -hmm. he hold, hold a knife to you or something? No, he just. I mean, he was bigger than me. Right. I mean, I'm not. Okay. Very big. So the next next day, you told your mom. Well, actually, um, my mom, our moms were looking for us that night because they came in. Like her mom came into the room to tell us something, and we weren't there. And called my mom, and my mom knew exactly. You know, she's like, I know exactly where they are, and. Like, right after it happened, my mother showed up. I had, you know, just, I had blood all over me, and my mom showed up. Blood? Yeah. What happened? I mean, I was, I have a huge scar on the inside of my vaginal wall from it, from where he, was, where he forced himself in, because it was my first time and everything. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, so uh, okay, so you brought charges up against the guy. Mm -hmm. Had you ever been victimized before that? No, never. I wasn't. Never. And what, and what happened? How'd he buy his way out of it? I mean, he pretty much just said, I mean, had all his friends up there going against me and saying, no, you know, she was the one that was saying, yeah, I want it, I want it. And, I mean, in the town, it depends on how much money you had to see where things would go. You know what I'm saying? What do you mean, how much money you like, had? I mean, the, more, the people that had the most money, you know, they could get anybody to believe them. Why? Mm -hmm. Just the way small Arkansas hick towns are. Did they pay them? Did he pay the jury? There, it never got to court or anything. I mean, everything was just dropped before it could get anywhere. He paid the judge. Like, I don't know what happened. I mean, it never. We were never called to court about it or nothing. I mean, my mother did what she could. I mean, we had like okay. thousands and thousands of dollars worth of hospital bills that. You know, uh, why didn't and those the medical records weren't brought into the court? They were, but they also looked at my blood alcohol level, which was four times the legal limit, and they were trying to pin it on my mom, saying she wasn't taking care of me or whatever because I was a minor. And well, we had something to that. I mean, it was well, just it was a real horrible ordeal. How did your mom know where to look? Well, because she knew I liked the guy, and like, mm. and I was like, you know, I was like, oh, that's where he, li that's where his friends live, and they party or whatever. All right. My mom has a photographic memory. She remembers where they lived. Okay. Where's your dad? Um, I've never known my dad. Mm -hmm. All right. Does your mom drink a little bit, too? No. Um, she doesn't. All right. She has heart problems, so she has to... She can't. Dad did, though. I guess. I don't yeah. know. My yeah. stepdad drinks a lot. Oh, uh, okay. He drinks and smokes a lot. Um, Bad times. Yeah. All right. So now you're looking for what? Just... I don't... I mean, is there... Should I go back to counseling? Yes. Or? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's just, used to, I'd have nightmares about it, and I there, wouldn't remember. A, Laura, there's a ton going on here. A ton. Just dealing with the alcoholic stepdad, the abandoning father, those two things by themselves enough to get back and do the work. Yeah. And now with all the trauma, and you have to move. Do you have friends now? Uh-huh. Um, well, I moved in with my mom's younger sister back that summer, my freshman year, because I got a job in Texas at an amusement park, and I've just stayed here, and I mean, I've got great friends down it, here. At uh, 15, you got a job at an amusement park? Uh-huh. Yeah. You moved to another... Um, Are you in college now? to Texas from Arkansas? Mm-hmm. Well, that's not that far. Are you in college well, I, I know. But it's just weird uh, moving to another state at 15 uh, and uh, working. Well, it was, I mean, it was all my choice. I mean, I came okay. down here and started working, and I mean, just made all kinds of friends. It's like, I don't want to go home. You in college now? Um, I will be in the fall again. All right. Yeah. All right. So there's a lot of good stuff happening, but it, it could sort of derail if you don't take care of some of this stuff. And the symptoms you're having now, I think, can really be dealt with. Yeah. And it may actually be time for some pharmacotherapy, some medication, too. Really? Yeah. Why? Just because the, the, the affect attached to all this is going to start to surface, and it could get difficult for her to manage while she's trying to deal with school and there's other things. And, you know. Yeah. yeah. She, she's complaining about symptoms. That may be a little control of medicine. Uh, Annika? Hey. Hey, you're 19. Yeah, I want to give a shout-out from IV. Yeah. <laughs> I was damn close to IV today. Really? That's Isla Vista, everybody. That's where uh, University of Santa Barbara is, or UC Santa Barbara. Yeah. Yeah, good times. Yeah, it's finals week right now. Real good times. Yeah, you know what I was? Uh, you know what I was remembering as I was uh, driving back from uh, Santa Barbara today. You know, you know the good thing about uh, growing up in a in a town and, and and remaining there your whole life is you don't have to go back and visit the old neighborhood. You, you can drive down. You know, you hear those stories that the, uh, you know, some prize fighter says that he, he drives down to his old neighborhood yeah, yeah. in Brooklyn, except yeah. for this time he's wearing a fur coat yeah, and he has yeah. a pinky ring and he's right. driving in a limousine. Right. 
All I got to do is go to my dad's house, and I get to drive that route. <laughs> you know, I, I just drive right. everywhere I go. It hasn't changed. I've been. Which is why it's good that you, you, bought, you built yourself a house three blocks from there. Right. It's nice. The party house. Yeah. But here's my point. I was driving home from Santa Barbara today. It was a beautiful day. I was in a beautiful car and I had a beautiful meeting and everything was great. And I was thinking as I was driving back about the time I drove to Isla Vista. Oh, yeah. Which is 10 miles further than Santa Barbara, yeah. which is uh, it's 100 miles. It takes an hour and 45 minutes to get there. Yeah. Uh, I was on my motorcycle. Oh, yeah. In the rain. It started raining when I got on the freeway off of Laurel Canyon in North Hollywood, oh. and it poured, and it was at night, and it was during the winter, oh. and I just, I was hanging on, white knuckled onto these, blue knuckled onto my handlebars, I was going, when you drive at uh, 75 and it's raining hard, it beats on you, and I and I peed on myself. <laughs> that was the thing. I, that's that's uh, that's the part I was remembering. Was the girl you're going to visit impressed when you arrived? No, no girl. Oh, guy. Oh, somewhere around Oxnard, I just myself. Nice. I said, look, I couldn't get any wetter. I couldn't get any colder. Why not just pee on myself? How do you even get the pee out when you're leaning over your handlebars, frozen to death? Uh, you, you'll go. Well, I, I could have had to start going in in like uh, West Hills, right. And just started flowing yeah. around Oxnard or Ventura. Well, anyway, good times. I think everyone who's a loser in college uh, makes that trip to Santa Barbara. Mm. Uh, I, did, I was drifting for a while and did that. Yeah, yeah. Well, good times over there. What's up there, Annika? Oh, uh, well, I was. I, I don't mean people who are there are losers. I mean those of us that were down here at any period of time. We always try, try to go up there. They used to have a good Halloween party yeah. out there. Yeah, they, not so much anymore. There's like 20 foot patrol to every block now. Yeah, yeah. they used to block off the street. Everyone would do drugs That's and just you had wander your, around. Your car almost turned over. Remember that? <laughs> Wasn't that in Halloween? No. Where? In Santa Barbara. I had a lot of Halloween weird stories there. Remember you were there, and, right? Oh, uh, you, were, you were telling people to tell them to gun it and run the people over? Oh, oh yeah, that was later in life, though. I was in a yeah, van. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Annika. Uh, yeah, so I was dating this guy for like a month, and uh, he had these little brown spots on his penis that looked like freckles, and I've never seen freckles on a penis before. Uh, and you may see them again. Oh, it's totally normal? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah. I've seen a lot of schwanz, and I've never seen freckles on yeah, a penis. Yeah, he didn't have them anywhere else on his body either, which was... What color is the guy? He's white. You yeah. know? Sometimes yeah. guys who have dark, pigmented skin have uh, things going on this with their dark. This was a little bit raised, though, right? What the freckles? These things are a little raised, or are they flat? Uh, they seemed flat. flat. I didn't... Okay. I mean, I'm, yeah, they were flat. They oh, you know. Freckles. There can be discolorations and things. It's normal. Did you ever ask him about it? No, no. I mean, you were dating the guy. I know. It's not odd that I didn't ask him, but no, I didn't. <laughs> well, I don't blame you. I wouldn't ask either. Yeah. Well, I was thinking maybe it was like scars from warts or herpes. Oh, uh, it's possible. They, they can they can pigment. That can happen. Yeah? Yeah, that can happen. All right. Well, she's not going out with him anymore, right? right. Jason. Yeah. You're, you're 26. What's up? Oh, hey, um... <clears throat> yeah, I got in a truck accident a while ago, and I hurt my back and stuff. And anyways, do you say track? Hold truck, on, truck, truck, truck or track? Truck. Yeah. Truck. Okay. Track. Track. Uh, right. Uh, <laughs> anyways, um, I get bad migraines now. Well, I've been having them ever since the accident, and um, the doctor prescribed me I'm a truck. Yeah. But like, he never prescribed like the amount I should be taking daily or whatever, and. Like, he, he gives me their 50-milligram tablets, yeah. and the only thing he told me to do was to break them in half. Right, you, you definitely should not be taking more than 100 milligrams a day, and you should definitely not be taking them every day. Uh, see, I take them, like, I take 25 milligrams, like, usually around 11 or noon, and then I take another 25 milligrams. Well, right. basically, these aren't migraines. And so the right. Imatric, well, there, there's something to do with the neck. It's some, either, either muscular headaches with scalp t scalp muscle headache from the neck injury or it's something else are you know no, they're not migraines because it wouldn't be connected to the accident they it, they aren't they aren't they aren't day in and day out like that and they and they go away with imatrex they go away migraines do yeah I mean, can you're, migraines... you're just popping pills so what other pills are you taking yeah junkie oh. <laughs> <laughs> Darvacet. yeah there you go that's why you have the headaches and back pain well, you? you're in your I take a half of Darvacet with the Imatrax, and he said it. He said I, uh, Imatrax, ibuprofen, or um, Motrin 500 or Motrin 800s, and then the Darvacets, and I could take like, um, you know, he says I can take them all together because they're, you know, I guess in the same family. How much Darvacet are you taking a day? 
Um, I just take a half of Darvastat. I think they're 500 milligrams. Once a day? No, I break one and a half, and I take a half with my half Imatrex and half with my other how, half. I, I'm going to ask you again. How many Darvastat are you taking a day? Just the one. One one tablet a day. Just one, yeah, one full tablet a day. Right, but, like, well, he doesn't... Um, the Imatrex can start giving you headaches, too, if you use too much of it. So just you, really? you need to get evaluated by somebody hey, special. can you get headaches. migraines from an accident? Not, that, not, not really? Not really, no. Not, not classic migraines. You get headaches. Bad yeah, headaches. I got, I got migraines before. I don't know if they're actually migraines. It's just a real severe headache. I'm yeah, just, like, bad headaches. Right, uh-huh. but I mean... I don't know. It's just he didn't. He never. Pers- he never told me don't take more than this. All right, I'm telling you, don't take more than 100 milligrams a day. But I think taking it every day is way too much, and it, you yeah. really don't even have a migraine. So the use of Imitrex is sort of questionable here. You get strung out on that well, stuff. My, my, headaches can have multiple causes, and these medicines like Imitrex can be useful even without classic migraines. But yeah, I, I've seen people get you know with this kind of thing. He just sort of he's. Well, tread and, water. He doesn't have a good, good treatment plan. No easier thing for your body to produce than a headache if it wants something, too. Oh, yes. I mean, that's the easiest that one is what, sum it up. That's right? absolutely what happens. And the withdrawal from the medicines cause headache. Right. So you've got the, the pain reward mechanism and the withdrawal. John? Yes. How you doing? Good. You're 38. What's up? Yeah. Um, I have this problem with um, I am very large. Mm-hmm. And uh, my uh, other half is having a problem taking the whole thing. Is that your balls, or are you talking about... No, oh, you're talking about your no. wife? Yeah, my wife. I see. I was By the other half, you mean? Yeah, that, so usually sometimes when I talk about my other half, I'm yeah. talking about my balls. I see. Oh, uh, well, no, I'm not talking about my balls. I see. And what do you measure in at? Uh, about 10, 10 and a half. I am a big boy. Boy. I'm a real big boy. Yeah, hold on a second there, John. We got to take a break, but we're, we're going to get back with this. All right. Okay. All right. He's checking people out now. By the way, I'd love, uh, I'd love that my penis was so big I didn't have to sweat that other half inch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Ten, ten and a half. Ten, ten and a half. <laughs> Me, I'm like, hey, uh, I'm five and thirteen sixteenths. <laughs> ten, ten and a half. Two of your penises. Isn't that nice. What's that? He's got two of your penises. How dare you? He does. How dare you? He does. How dare you? <laughs> he does not have two of my penises. Two of my penises would be nine. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, two of my penises would be uh, would be 12. Oh, good maybe, times. maybe 12 and change. Oh, well, I'm impressed. Yeah, oh, yes. Good times. Oh, yes. We'll be back. Hi, this is Brian and Gordon from Violent Violent Femmes, Femmes. and you're listening to Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew on Love Line. Yes, you is. Phone number 1-800-LVE-191. You want to give Dr. Bruce a plug? Yeah, I need his phone number, though. He doesn't have it. Mm, he, I'm sure he has it. But uh, Bruce, again, is here with people lined up out the door to get his special treatments. His laser treatments. His laser and his microdermabrasion. He's really become quite an expert in this stuff. But the, the thing he's becoming known for is uh, tattoo removal. That's right. And uh, he also can do these laser facials and get rid of wrinkles and all kinds of fun stuff. So He came over and played basketball on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Bruce fills in for, for Dr. Drew from time to time. Anyone who listens to the show knows his name. He is uh, all uh, Adam's apple and elbows, that guy. I mean, I, I was, what, you know, I said to a guy, when he guards you, it's like an evil sorcerer <laughs> put a curse on a scarecrow and animated it, brought it to life, and had it guard you. <laughs> Ichabod Crane? Yeah. Uh, oh, no. Crazy. Crazy out there. John? Yes. So all right. John with the... Uh, ten, ten and a half yeah. on the penis. Right. Yes. And uh, what size is your wife? Oh, what size is my wife? How tall is she? Yeah. Uh, she's about 5'7". All right. Mm-hmm. And she can't take all that. No, she can't. What happens? Uh, I just can't go in all the way. Well, that's all right. It really hurts. And uh, So why do you have to go in all the way? It's, I guess it's a man thing. I have no idea. I mean, it's it feels good, but it... It just doesn't feel like I'm being pleased like I should. Mm-hmm. Um, where the work I ends. Be, I, I, I've been in relationships before. Uh, um, 
I was always with men before, too. And this is my first experience with a woman. Wow. And I've been with her for four years now. Well, the... the oh, the, hold on. Mm-hmm. You, you, you put that uh, redwood log in some guy's ass? Yeah. Oh! Well, the... the the thing about the yeah. rectum is that it, it, there's no sort of a dead end like there is in the vagina. Vagina dead uh, ends. What do you mean, dead I mean, end? A, uh, the, you'll vagina, have a dead end if this guy gets you with that big Vagina door. dead ends into the cervix and the uterus. Right. The, the rectum, if you can make that sigmoid curve, it keeps going. Well, back. the rectum's more of a cul-de-sac. N- no, it's nine feet. I just want to get sack in there. Okay. So you're you're saying with the with the rectum, you theoretically could fish a jump rope up there, sure, and it would keep going. Yeah, there's no there's no end to it. So he he got used to being right. able to go in as far as he wanted to, which is not. Yeah, good. And, see, it was it was a friend of mine, and, and I talked to him all the time. And um, am I allowed to say his first name? Who? What are you oh, talking? Yeah. About? Well, why? All right, this is bogus. I mean, there's a lot. Of- All right, hold on a second. I think this guy's bogus. Yeah, I don't know why he needs to say anybody's name. But I, let's hear what he was trying to say about him. I wanna, I'm curious. Well, w- okay, but why would you say a friend of mine told me... Is it am, okay? Am I allowed to say the guy's yeah, name? Yeah, it doesn't make sense at all. Yeah, like if we went, oh, Christ, that was Paul? But but maybe... Well, he's good people. I'm just wondering if what he said would somehow make sense. But I'm sure all right, well, let's find sure out. John, yeah. why did you want to say the guy's name? Well, I, I don't want to say him all the time. I mean, well, you, you say your friend. I mean, there's your been f- other people I've had, but right. this is the one person I've been talking to all the time, and all right. he is my, he's my ex-lover. All right, that's your friend. Well, just call him your friend. Okay, my friend. Okay. And what's uh, the question about him, your friend? He tells me that it's, like you guys were explaining before, that it's on a woman that you can't take it as deep as a man can. Well, it did dead ends. Thank you, yeah, John. It, it, it just, Hold on, not. Drew. Where's your scratch pad? <laughs> yeah, didn't we just get into that? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just, and I don't understand. She says it hurts her every time I go inside of her. That's right. It, it hey, oh, hold I'm on. not sure hold if on. I should go back to my friend or if I should stay with her. Hey, hey, is this your girlfriend? This yes. Is, I thought this was his wife. No, no. Oh, girlfriend. Okay, no. John. Let, let's uh, let's put your penis aside for a second. Okay. As difficult as that is, with the size that it is, uh, it's not that difficult. Let's talk about you for a second. Uh-huh. Are are you doing any drugs? No, no. You no. got a job? Excuse me. What are you doing for work? I work on the highway. I see. What does that mean? Uh, r- raping uh, young men. Uh. No, uh-huh. you you work. You no, work. I, work I, I do. Uh, I work on on bridges and road crew. Road crew. Road crew right. Oh wait a minute! It, uh, this is not a gay man. He does not sound gay. He do, works on bridges. What's up? What happened? What are we missing? Tell me. What, you mean, what are you missing? What happened with you growing up? Um, I don't know. I have no idea. I was never raped, never molested, no nothing. Just I have no idea. I was always, I always had this thing for men. And but why are you with a woman now? To see if it's any different. And is it? Um, no, it's not. Do you you still like? You still like uh, w- men, right? Yes. And you're not, like, the you guys you work with don't know you're gay? No, they don't. Because you don't have any of that uh, affect? No. You don't seem gay? No. This is true gay? Yeah. Born gay, the life is to live gay. This is born gay. You're and very and I, about I appreciate this. that. No, because if you think about all the guys with all the affect. Yeah. All the guys that just uh, make you, the, the guys you want to throttle because they're they're gay on top of gay with some gay sprinkled on top of it. That's all because they got effed with, and now it's gay for the world, and it's hostile gay, and it's gay that we have to know. But this John, he's born gay. Yeah, it doesn't affect other parts of his life. Yeah, no, it doesn't. He's just and gay. gay. I'm, and there's not too many people out there when I work. They know I'm gay. No, you know, he's gay to the bone, inside his bone, not marrow, semen. Uh, yeah. Another man's semen in there. Well, first off, you forget about women if you're gay. Uh huh. I mean, you know, if you're going to be gay, be gay. I think you gotta you gotta stick with men, and you don't have to worry about hurting them because uh, they got a bottomless salad bowl. It's like the bottomless pit. Right. 
Yeah. Hey, but still, doesn't it hurt him, that huge penis of yours? Uh, I've only found one person, and uh, he, it doesn't seem to bother him. Seems so, like he, so he's your boyfriend? Yeah. Right. Are you still boyfriend with him? Boyfriend and boyfriend? Oh, uh, I haven't slept with him in a while. Okay. Well, maybe you're done with the female relationship you're with, you're in. Yeah. Does she know about this? No. She doesn't know you were gay. She knows. Gay. She know, he comes over all the time. Oof. Right. That has no idea. Does he no. weirded out by the fact that you have a girlfriend? Excuse me. Does he freaked out about the fact that you have a girlfriend? Uh, he knows that I wanted to try it. Okay. Wow. Well, you tried it, and maybe it didn't work. Yeah. Hey, I mean, is, is that what you think? Don't let me put words in your mouth. Yeah. Okay. Well, it, maybe it's maybe not it's working out. I mean... It's... Okay. You tried. It was like me in school. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I gave it a shot in the sixth grade. It just it, it didn't work out. This gentleman gave it a much more sincere shot than you gave at school. I don't know. I, I put in a pretty good uh, couple of weeks there in the sixth grade. It just didn't work out. All right, a couple weeks, yeah. Right, so he's gay. Yeah. yeah. You seem fascinated by this guy. Well, this is this is the gay man you've been looking for. Yeah. Yeah, this is the one. I don't know, though. He's pretty nope. big. Yeah, well... I like no, to start yeah. with a smaller penis you know, and you, work you, my you, way you up to that. You could you these graduated... Uh... <laughs> oh my <laughs> graduated God. butt plugs? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and you know, this is the guy. This is the one that can do, do construction with you and... Uh, Hang. He's, I, I just. He's I, a guy, gay guy. He is a real gay. Yeah, Adam. This is it. Not, no wonder you're so intrigued by this guy. Not this, that this, pain in the ass guy who sounds like he's uh, from France or England. This but is he's the guy you've been looking for for so many years. Oh, Jimmy's got to This out. makes me hate the affected gays more. Hey, Chris. Yeah. You're 15. What's up? Yeah. Um. I kind of. Um. I recently have a new girlfriend, right? Yeah. She's 15 also. And um, I found out that she um, tried to um, kill herself recently. Uh -huh. Well, not recently, but before I, I was with her. Right. Hey there? Yeah, yeah. we're listening. Um, and I, I don't know kind of like how to, how to deal with it. How, how to like... Um, well, how long ago did she try to kill herself? Um, I think um, yeah. last year. Okay. Right. She's on medication? Um, I don't think so. She's following with her doctors? Um, she recently went with a, um, a psychiatrist. Ask him uh -huh. another question. <laughs> Just ask him. Uh, has she been depressed lately? Uh, yeah. Um, oh, you didn't do the um. I was banking on the um. Um? 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 No, um. Uh, um. Well, yeah, she has. <laughs> uh, uh, um, is what he does. <laughs> yeah. She has been depressed. And All right. Well, make sure she's seeing the people that are taking care of her. It's yeah. none of your. It's not your job to be caring for her. Are you having sex? No. Good. Your job is to. Oh my God. Not, not when yeah. she's depressed. That'll yeah. destabilize well, things more. The hard thing is when when she was thirteen, when she went out with guy, he was twenty. Yeah. And so they they went out, and then her mom broke him up, and <laughs> and she was really depressed. They were in love, and yeah, yeah. And so yeah. she's kind of like. Um, I'm not. I'm not falling in love with you yet. I'm not going to tell you I love you until I really do, because then it'll it'll hurt me if like we break up. So sure. Yeah. So okay. What, like, what, what would you suggest, Doctor Jones? I would suggest you take your time. You not be concerned with managing her psychiatric status. You make sure she gets the care she needs, and that she's following up properly. And other than that, be a be a caring boyfriend. I know this has come up before, Drew. Um. <laughs> um. <laughs> but. I just keep, it keeps coming back to my mind, mm -hmm. and I, I can't get my mind around it, which is, we talk to these girls and all the hell they've been through, yeah. all they've seen, and how, how fast they mature, how quickly they become sexual. Yeah. She's 13, she's in love with a 20-year-old guy, she tried to commit suicide, yeah. Yeah, maybe some sexual abuse, maybe a little physical abuse, we don't know for sure. You know, there's maybe a little substance abuse and a dad that went AWOL, God knows when. Now she's hooked up with 15-year-old Chris. Chris's life is, uh, has uh, existed basically... He, he's lived on Pac-Man and... Nintendo. Nintendo and watching Dukes of Hazard reruns. Yeah. yeah. Likes uh, giving his buddies wedgies. And collecting Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, now, now he's dealing with this. Now he's got this. Yeah. And he, he's lost. Uh. And they're talking about love, and they're uh. talking about commitment, and he doesn't even know where he is. I mean, you, you, 
you would you rather have a chipmunk perform brain surgery oh, yeah. on you than have this poor guy deal with this baggage known known as his 15 year old girlfriend well and just think about the fact that his he just his penis just turned on too he just became interested in all this about a year or so he's ago. horny yeah. he's producing sperm he's in love and he's got a handful Do you know what i mean this yeah. this is like you getting your learner's permit and somebody giving you a, a ferrari testarossa and a pair of pliers <laughs> and saying hey good luck yeah you, no you you got to keep it up you got to work it's all yours just whatever how long? How long before the guy just wrapped it around a telephone pole? Yeah, no time. <laughs> right. I mean, what do you do? What do you tell this guy? Mm. Don't do it. No, just don't get it. Don't. He, you know, he's going with her. I know. I don't. But don't. Wherever try to she be... goes, she's going to suck him in oh. and then pull her into this. Pull him into this crazy oh, no. universe. Oh no! And he'll have no defense. Yeah, but think how many people go through relationships like that. Wouldn't it be easier for him to just get in the ring with Tyson? Oh, yeah. Yeah, just get it over with. Right. Yeah. Okay. We'll take a little break. We'll be back. Hey, everybody. It's the Love Line. Engineer Anderson is going to find the uh, airplane turbulence public service announcement. Because let me say something, everyone. i got to be quite honest with you all. I, it's my job to take your calls and... Try to help you and do that every night. No, it's my job to help you. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. It's Drew's job. It's part of my job. But I need to entertain myself as well. Otherwise, I won't be... You, you know, it's like yeah. you got to let your employee play a little hacky sack every once in a while in the hall so he yeah, can be more productive. In these creative environments where they put, like, basketball hoops in the middle of the office. And, yeah, right. this is that for you. Right. I need to go off on this airplane turbulence public service announcement, which we have not heard in, what, two years? Oh, on no. this show? Oh, I've heard it in the background a number of times. Oh, I've just not caught it? I've been right. out? Right. Reed's just not been listening. It's yeah. been around? Yeah, yeah. Well, I caught it this time. How, how long has it been away? Anderson. Okay. Right. Leave it was, Anderson It was gone away. for like a year and a half. I just Really? Yeah. I swear to God, I've heard it. I've heard no. it. No. It's been gone. Is when, it, is, when has there been it? a different one? A, a different no. airplane turbine? I just brought it back like a month ago. Uh, a month ago. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Well, there you go. All right. All right. Now, do you have it, Anderson? Because I, I would like to critique this for a second. Please, we're not going to help anyone. First anymore. of all, let's let's just guess how much money was spent developing this thing. Uh, I don't know. I don't care. But they, what they do... But your tax dollars go into crap right, like this. Right, right. Well, I, I, it doesn't matter whether it was a nickel or $5 million. It's too much. Here's the point. Uh, the scary thing is probably more than the $5 million. No, it is not. To produce a public service announcement... And then put, do they pay to put them out? Well, the stations have to do it. They have to play a certain amount of these things. Here's the deal. In order to keep your FCC license, you have to play a certain amount of these public service announcements. These are things that are put together by different organizations in order to sort of better the community that the radio station serves. And that's great. They're talking about AIDS. And, of course, you know, the only cure for AIDS is what? A cure? Yes. Uh, don't get it. Don't get it. Not getting the AIDS. Right. So they're, they're brilliant little aphorisms like that. <sighs> But they come out with them, and some make sense. Now, I would like to just yell, hey, listen, all you uh, mongoloids, stop breeding. That would be my PSA, and let's get that morning after pill going. But, no, they want to talk about er airplane turbulence, which, to my knowledge, is not a big social problem in this country. Drew, are you aware if anyone's ever been injured? Everyone close your eyes. Here's what I'd like you to well, do. Well, you know, when you go on planes, um, they usually don't give you any instruction about... Oh, no, no. I was on a flight just the other uh, week where they mentioned something about a seatbelt, Drew. You're a, a, wrong. A what? See, it's called a seatbelt. Yeah, she uh, talked into that thing that uh, the, with the speakers in the PA cabin. System, yeah, PA yeah. system, She said something about a seatbelt. Seatbelt? It's this thing that, you, you know what you have in your car? Or it goes around your lap. Oh, oh, oh. They got oh. that in airplanes, the too. you shut the door, it goes across. That's the, yeah. right. They don't talk about it much. Probably mm. only between 750 and 800 goddamn times when you get on an airplane. So they come out with PSAs like the following. Anderson? What and, a tough thing and your it, body is. Anderson, can it's you stop this? Withstand. Ben? Can we go back and forth with this? I'd really like to break this thing down. Can we start from the top here? All right, I'll tell you when to hold it. All right. What a tough thing your body is. All right. It's built to withstand bending. Right. Pinching. Tattooing. Oh. Swimming. Bumping. 
Pickling. <laughs> Shaving. They changed it. Wow, yeah, it's a different one. Childbirth. Oh. There oh. we go. <laughs> Football. Bad cooking. Rollerblading. Rollerblading. Even company meetings. All right. But there's something the human body isn't built to withstand. Uh -huh. Unexpected turbulence. All right. Now stop built. it there. Stop it there. Now let me just shoot a hole in this PSA premise, which is... And I would like to talk to the mother efforts that make this thing. Because I guarantee there are more injuries in football, Pop Warner High School, college, junior college, and at the pro level. I guarantee that there are 1,000 injuries for every one injury caused by airplane turbulence in just football. So, you bring up the goddamn thing that causes more injuries than the thing you're going to warn us about? Yeah. Yeah. In your example? How about rollerblading? What kind of son of tard are you? Yeah. I guarantee that if you combine football and rollerblading, it would dwarf the amount of injuries that happened during airplane turbulence. Du uh, infinitesimal. Infinitesimal. Yeah. Why is that your, why is that your example? Why? <laughs> why in your example? Yeah. yeah. Why put two things Why not just put uh, uh, motor vehicle accidents? Yeah. You, you're meant to withstand motor vehicle accidents. Or auto right. versus pedestrian. Why not cancer? Yeah, cancer. Why not just put the goddamn cancer in yeah. there, heart disease, everybody? Yeah. Okay. So, now, everyone close your eyes and, and think about anyone you've ever known has been injured via airplane turbulence. Okay, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expand that. Anybody you've heard of, any celebrity, any dignitary, any public figure, any... Ah, here's a good example. Uh, pro athletes, Los Angeles Lakers flying back and forth to Philadelphia. Baseball teams play 85 games a year on the road. Millions and millions and millions of miles logged every year by professional athletes. Is there ever heard of one of them who could not make the game because of turbulence? As opposed to the injuries they incur while playing the games, such as football. Yes, yes. Uh, half of the Philadelphia 76ers are not playing in the series because of injuries, not because of our airplane turbulence. And, uh, yes, get to the uh, get around a playoff time in the football season. Check the roster out. Should we hear the rest of this? See how many of them are related to airplane turbulence. But let's go ahead, Anderson. Happily, though, planes are built to withstand that really well. Uh -huh. All you have to do is wear your safety belt the entire flight. Hold on. What so is this new? Wait, no, they changed what the name. I'm confused. Safety belt. Safety belt. What, what is this magic? Seat belt. What is this new innovation? How come it's never been brought out when I was on the airplane? I've never heard tale of this. How would you use it? I'll tell you what. I, I spend my entire flight in a lotus position upside down on my seat <laughs> drinking, and I've never been told otherwise. Never had anybody. That, yeah. There's no goddamn light that comes. What about that noise that the pilot kicks the thing ding, on ding, and yeah. off? The pilot said you can take your seatbelt off, but what? go back to your seat. Go. Does he have to explain landing. to them what to do? He must. Uh, it's keep, safety belt. Keep, Not, keep going, Anderson. This is where your taxpayer dollars are going, everybody. So next time you fly, stay buckled up uh -huh. the whole time. Uh -huh. Because uh -huh. after all... Turbulence happens, and uh -huh. you're just not built for it. No. This no. message is a public service of no. this state. No. no. Everyone knows that being jostled in a padded seat is far worse than being blindsided by 270-pound <laughs> linebackers blitzing or running into a, a lamp post when you're rollerblading. Yeah. Of course. That is the worst goddamn PSA I've ever heard in my life. And the only thing worse than that is the uh, 50,000 people who die every year from secondhand smoke. I would like to get those two people who constructed those PSAs to get together and have a class action lawsuit against them on behalf of radio stations and, yeah, and their we, consumers. We could be spending more time on airport laptop computer theft, after all. That is the other PSA that drives me through the effing roof. Please. I, I don't know who these groups are. Is there some lobby group for turbulence? I, I, what is going on? Is, is, are the, is that the biggest fish we have to fry in this country? Airplane turbulence? We got junkies. We got school shootings. We got unemployment. We got, uh, we, we got domestic abuse. That's all we can talk about. Mm. And laptop theft at the airport with McGruff. Oh, wait till I'm in charge. Wait till I'm in charge. Okay, I'm going to pee. All right, me too. We'll be back. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah? Well, 
love line. Hey, yeah. for those of you that are interested in Dr. Bruce and the tattoo removal and the uh, skin rejuvenation, the, uh, the wrinkle removal system right. he's got, it's a 888-340-7790. Good time. 888-340-7790. He's L.A. based. For those of you around the country, this is Los Angeles number. Yeah. It's 888-340-7790. <laughs> oh, let, let me get another fart. 888-340-7790. That stinks, too. Oh, yeah, come that's on. That's psychosomatic. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Oh, you heard, <laughs> <laughs> you heard the sound and you're oh, reacting. Yes. That was a placebo oh, fart. You're goodness. a doctor. Oh. All right. So until next time, oh. Colt tomorrow night, everyone. This is Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Born gay. The life is to live gay. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff.